Um, hey, good morning, Scott. How you doing, brother? Nice to see you again. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, it's been a long time. Good to have you well, mate. <laughs> the whole the whole world seems to have changed since we last spoke last year. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for the good and the bad, I suppose. Um, cool, man. Yeah, nice to chat to you again. And thanks again for um, taking the time to join me. Obviously, as I, 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 we gave you a bit of a brief um, about what we're chatting about, as you've seen in the community, um, this month in the community, we're focusing very heavily on sales. It's our theme of the month. And um, I mean, I promise to the, the members of the community, we get some real... Um, knowledge into the community, um, you know, people like guys like you who are expert in that sort of niche and that sort of place to, um, in the, within the the, the the business of running a digital agency to share some of your knowledge. So what we've been doing, is, as I'm sure you can see, is, is we've been sharing a bunch of stuff around sales. We've, we've targeted on focusing on benefits, on pitching. We did some stuff in pitching, you know, those sorts of um, things we've been sharing. But um, obviously I wanted to chat to you and see what, what you could bring to the party and, and what kind of angle what kind of advice and tips you would give the community this month, particularly on our theme in terms of what you feel they should be focusing on with sales? Yeah, definitely. So this is actually something I know quite a, li quite a bo lot about, really. Um, it's a conversation that I have at least two or three times a day. Um, yeah. And it's all about how do I get more clients? How do I bring in more clients? How do I bring in the right type of client? Yeah. Um, and by the, by the right type of client, normally it's one of two things. One, you're selling a message that that person's going to stay. Um, you don't want high churn in your business because you're then just doing more and more sales. It's just an ever, a leaky bucket. So you don't want that. Um, but the second is making sure that you get the people that you want to work with, the people that you want to help and support. Yeah. So our strategy is all about going niche specific. Um, and I know most businesses talk about this, but one of the key things for us is understanding that niche that you're going to target, understanding what their pain points are, and then focusing on that. And then to support that in a, in a sort of high level term, we use big data. So using data and backing everything up with data by going, hey, did you know this is an industry problem that I can solve? Right. Um, and that's the, the core message. Got you, got you. And I think that's so important. And, and that's the cool thing about sales is so many things you learn in one element of sales, if it's lead generation or qualifying or pitching, they're actually relevant to the whole funnel that you're trying to build within your agency. But I think what's key there, one of the key things that you hit on uh, in particular was around data. You know, very, and it's so ironic because as digital agencies, a lot of us prove to our um, clients that we're doing a good job by giving them the data that we've done a good job but we don't often focus on that stuff for our own internal agent. We don't base our sales conversations or base our sales efforts on the data that we can achieve. A lot of times because we're so swamped and we're so busy, so we don't get to it. But I want to go back one step and, and maybe just, maybe if you can unpack what you hit on there, which I think is a great um, step in the funnel that a lot of agencies struggle with when it comes to sales. And that is the, 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 the exercise around niching and choosing a niche and, and actually saying, hey, this is what I'm going to go for. Because we spend a lot of time and expensive effort on going after our clients and often, all too often, too late, we discover, hey, man, I should have just focused on this niche in the beginning because this is where all my agents. So why did I waste two or three years trying to do it? So what, what kind of tips and what, how do you guys go about picking a niche and, and what, what advice would you give to agencies who want a niche? Yeah, definitely. So this is um, something that we focus on quite a lot. Uh, we work within about 60 specific niches that we only target. And that's our main where, main areas that we work and we find success within. And yeah. um, so for agencies that are looking at going niche specific, there are a couple of key questions that you need to ask um, and ask yourself. The first is, OK, what niche do you want to work in? What customer? Working? Is it a blue collar or white collar business? Yeah. Do you like having conversations yeah. with attorneys or who do you want to help and support? Do you have a passion for education and you want to help young children? So that's actually a business that you want to work in. Actually, do you have a passion to help local service-based businesses under a certain um, um, income level or wh yeah. whatever it is? So pick the area that you want to work within um, or you look for that, um, those conversations that you want to have within that area. And then the next thing is going, okay, who can offer you the best type of return? So, okay, is a florist a good um, a business for you? Probably, depending on the niche you're in, probably lower monthly re recurring revenues, probably more contact, okay? What size of businesses do you wanna work and, and what ret return on investment? So this, I'll, if I'll give an example of a niche, like the roofing niche, for example, is a niche that quite a lot of dis businesses want to get into because of two main things. 
One, the return is really good for the client. If you get their first client over, it can be 10, 15, $20,000. So you can pay for your marketing after one client. Um, so you're looking for that type of thing. Um, I don't suggest roofing because it's highly saturated, but yeah. looking at those types of things, looking at those demographics. If I speak for a client that we've recently onboarded, I spoke to him and was talking about, okay, who do you want to target? Where do you want to go? Um, and set him with some homework and let him go away and do some a bit of research. And basically he came back to me and goes, hey, Scott, found my niche. I was like, right, okay, what niche are you going for? I'm going for um, um, sort of natural burials. I was like, what? He says, I've done research within this market. It's not a market that's gone after. There's a lot of people looking for it now. And that's what he's doing. And he's getting great success from it. Yeah, yeah. Like, so he's picked a niche within a niche. And um, he's found something that he works within, something he's passionate about. He's um, he's sort of very eco-friendly himself. So a fantastic niche for him. And he's great, seen great success. Yeah, that's pretty great. And and I think what's 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 also what you, what's actually sitting behind what you're saying is, is there is a bit of work involved. You can't just expect it to fall in your lap. Um, you know, one of the tips that I always give agencies around picking a niche is look in your past and see if there's a, something in your past where you, which, where, where, which is pushing you towards an obvious niche. Did you spend your internship as a, as a youngster in a bank or, you know, um, did you did you have a, a previous career in a bank or, or in a financial institution or something? That's an obvious way, but there's not much work involved. What you've described there is actually going out there and digging down into the niche and into the into the work and doing the work and saying, hey, this is a niche that makes sense. And I guess what you're also saying as well is what we have to do as agencies is kind of pick those um, pick smartly, but pick those paths of least resistance when you are going after a florist, as you say. And you're going to have to be churning over multiple, multiple, multiple leads for them. You're asking, you, you, you put, you're putting your back up against the wall, and it's going to become quite difficult. Whereas if it's the roofing, as you say, the roofing niche, um, where um, it's uh, one client and they can, you know, you've made their business for the year, kind of for a month or whatever, it, it's a much, a much more chance of success and, and, and setting you up for, for um, greater success into the future. Definitely. And and I think one of the, the key issues that quite a lot of agencies understand or think of is, oh, if I go niche specific, I'm not going to get enough of the market. Like, there are businesses and agencies out there that are running specifically on HVAC, on, on roofing, on um, dental, that are seven, eight figures. Yeah. Um, but also you've got that fact that actually, if you want to scale, you could. So if we take um, a specific niche and you go, okay, what other niches can I go in that are similar? Yeah. So if I was to go for fencing, can I then go for, okay, can I go for um, patio laying? And can I go for um, um, decking? All those different niches. And then you can scale up through that as you grow. Yeah. But to start, definitely focus on your niche. And as you say, Stephen, research it, yeah. understand it, use the past experiences, but also have conversations with people. Yeah, I was just going to say the conversation piece is so important because what we tend to do, I, I was I made a point in one of the earlier videos we did in the month in the one of the short videos that I'm doing, um, I made a point about how so many, every digital agent you speak to who's enjoying success, you say, geez, how are you doing it? How's what kind of marketing, what kind of advertising are you doing? They say, it's word of mouth, it's referral, yeah. and it and it's very true. I think most businesses in general they they do rely very heavily on word of mouth and referral, and I wouldn't call that referral marketing. I just said that's word of mouth marketing. But what, what very few businesses who are enjoying that success do when they're enjoying that success is actually processize it and put an active um, um, uh, data behind it and, and a process behind it and say, hey, this is working for me. Let me make sure that I spend a lot of time on it. And what lands up happening with a lot of, and talking about specifically agencies here, is they enjoy the good days when all the referral marks works coming in, but all of a sudden it dries up and they don't have anything in place to keep that machine running. Yep. And I think a, a word of advice when it comes to what you said about speak to people, do the research. You don't even have to spend hours and hours on the on the computer researching in your area what's big. What you all you really have to do is sit down with a, take a mate for coffee, take a couple of mates for coffee, take the lawyer and the accountant. Say, guys, listen, I'm trying to grow my business a little bit, and you're an, a lawyer, you're an accountant, you you work in a nursery school. Could you guys introduce me to people? Do you think it's a good niche for me to go? And there, there you're doing your research and you're having exactly. a cup of coffee, which is always lacquer. But you actually, you actually, you know, you, you, you're actually making a deliberate effort and you're putting a process into referral marketing, which is so, it's so important. Completely Some of the agencies agree. don't do. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, completely agree. I think that that's it. And that face to face value, that conversation that you can have, whether it's over Zoom or a direct coffee, which actually during COVID now, most people are probably going to be more excited for like, yeah. would you mind meeting for a coffee? Like, oh, my God, I've not been, oh out, of God, the office. Yeah. <laughs> not been out of the house. So but yeah, so like those types of strategies all work like it's something that we do. We have conversations yeah. with people with no intention on doing business with them in just an intention of finding out some information and how we can help and support moving forward. Yeah, so, uh, gotcha. So I think that um, the other thing that I think is worth mentioning is um, I guess what you, you brought up as well was um, data. And that is so important because what we tend to do, even if we do put a process behind things, and even if we do um, make deliberate efforts to things, we tend to stop at the oh, this is working great, and then they carry on. What we don't do is say, hey, let me actually sit back and look if this is actually working. Maybe it's just fluke. Maybe it's just luck that I've got this. This is paying off for me. And we don't sit down and say, hey, I made X amount of calls to X, to these kinds of industries and they resulted in X amount, which is resulted in the bottom line. The data is telling me that this is worth my while. Because often when we do do that exercise, the data actually tells us that it's often not worth our while, even though it seems like it is worth our while. It may turn around that it's way too expensive for us to be continuing to do something. So I guess that's a big part as well of what you, you're up to. Definitely. That's, that is probably the biggest decision that you'll make both, both on both sides. Is this a niche? Is this an area that I want to pursue in? Is there opportunity for me, but actually is there a problem? Is there a pain that I can solve? And you can use the data that you've already got, that you've already gathered and um, through campaigns you're already running, or you can use softwares and platforms to be able to gather that information to be able to go, okay, this is a problem and I can fix it. Yeah. Got you got you so important listen yeah. thank you so much for your time and I, I as you know we try to keep these as short as possible so they're digestible for people Definitely. in the community but i think i and i want to reiterate it again i think nothing you've you've added in here is stuff that hasn't come up in the other parts of the funnel data yeah. conversations making deliberate efforts putting price it's it's just it's the same lesson coming over and over and over from another expert yeah. in the industry in terms of agency sales you know it, it, you know really important to the members of the community to say guys you've got to um start somewhere and start thinking about it in a process way as i Definitely. always say you know at the end of these chats i always say if you guys are interested in more information obviously scott is available he'll he'll definitely uh, make some time to chat to you if you want to learn some more skills and, and and get some help in your agency no doubt he'll be there and, and um, he'll share his stuff below the video um and for, from our perspective as usual with the theme of the month please don't be shy put um, hashtag swipe file in the comments down below and we'll shoot you over the free resource which is an agency sales swipe file resource it's got a ton of free information in that that relates to what we've been discussing about in the community this month you know talking about benefits talking about it's got a bunch of um, um cheat sheets as well that are ready to go all you need to do is plug in your agency information and you'll get you'll get going so um, don't be shy guys this is the month to, to change the sales and make a dramatic impact in your business Scott. I just want to finish on one quick thing, Stephen, like just to give somebody a high level. So this this week alone, we did some data. We then contacted 10 businesses, cold businesses, video message, video message to them direct based off the data we've gathered. Seven watched the videos, four have signed up as clients. Wow. You don't have to do this on large scale. Yeah. Think of it locally, think of it small yeah. and do it specific. That's specific. Also, it's also such an important message is we tend to think about, oh man, but I've got a database of a thousand people. How am I going to do this a thousand times? You don't need to do it a thousand times. You need to do it, like you said, 10 times. Do exactly. 10 and you get 40% hit rate, 40% success rate, not hit rate. 40% six. success rate. Yep, four new clients. Amazing. Well done, man. That's that's an insane, um, great little tip. Cool. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Stephen. Really, Thanks, sir. Bye.